My name is Larry Attree um, and I work for Safer World. Um, and one of the things that we've been working on a lot for the last couple of years is trying to promote the inclusion of measures to prevent violence and support lasting peace in the world's new development framework. And there's um, three important things to say about this. Firstly, um, we're building on evidence that development can't really work if you don't reduce violence and foster peace. So all around the world, when you look across the performance on the previous Millennium Development Goals, we see that where you have a lot of violence or conflict, then you have real problems. Uh, conflict destroys schools. Um, conflict is a cause of the highest under five mortality in the world. Um, in conflict affected societies, you have lower levels of gender equality. You have the highest levels of maternal mortality. Um, so what we're really seeing is a picture that you can't make progress on poverty eradication if you're not preventing conflict and violence. So what do we do with that agenda? At the global level, what we're saying to people is that we need uh, in all societies to work towards four things. Firstly, reducing violence and increasing the public's confidence and security provision. Secondly, ensuring that people have effective remedies to injustice. Um, Thirdly, um, we're also talking about um, fair access to resources, services, livelihoods, and also into participation in uh, political decision-making. Um, and then uh, finally, we're also saying that societies that reduce corruption and bribery are the ones that are doing better on conflict and violence. So we'd like to see a commitment on that issue too in the post-2015 framework. Then the third point I'd like to make is that if you do these things on the ground in uh, conflict or violence affected societies, that's a real recipe for reducing crime, violence and conflict, and that's great. But also, the post-2015 development framework is a global thing where countries can work together and all countries, rich or poor, can show responsibility on certain global factors that drive conflict. So our research on those issues shows that um, the issues of irresponsible arms trade, um, the impacts of the drugs trade, the trade in conflict commodities like the coltan that goes into mobile phones or diamonds that come from conflict societies, um, and also what we call illicit financial flows, which are the proceeds of crime, of bribery, of tax evasion. These factors are really important for driving conflict all around the world, and we think that it's appropriate in a global framework like this that all countries, rich or poor alike, make firm commitments to address these issues. Our research also shows that you can measure progress in doing all these things in a balanced way that shows you both objective performance, a change in the capacities to address the problems, and also crucially whether people believe that progress is being made. If we don't ask people whether development is working, we are not really going to get a fair picture of whether we succeed. So, one of the things that we've been saying is that we really need to build in that people's perspective into the way we measure our progress.